views and opinions expressed in the following program are those of the hosts and guests and not necessarily those of the staff and management of WWDB-TV. Whether she's walking the red carpet or doing interviews, you'll find her with celebrities and all the latest news. Yeah, she's there, she's everywhere, she's always on the go So sit back, relax, and get ready This is the Corey Taylor Talks Show Hello, hello everybody, and welcome to Corey Taylor Talks, live from Las Vegas I am so excited about my guest today. It's been actually almost exactly a year ago, um, and so much has happened, and we have so much to discuss. Um, I we, have. We, we might need two hours. <laughs> probably, so. probably. Once I get rolling here. So. <laughs> no, but we have the wild and crazy and amazing <laughs> and fabulous, and I'm so excited. The one and only Mr. Dirk Berman. Oh, I'm glad to be here. I, I can't am, believe it's been a year. I know. It, like, literally almost exactly Can a year. Can you cuss on this show? <laughs> yes, you can do whatever you Fucking want. Year. There you go. <laughs> Good. Good. We got that out of the way. Yes. I'm sure there'll be no more f bombs. But yeah. oh no, not at all. <laughs> so how have you been? I um, so much to go over. I know there is. There is a lot. It's um, Christmas Eve. I had a stroke. Yes. That's why it took so long. Uh, I'm doing obviously much better. Yes. Um, uh, it was a it was a major stroke, and so I had two TIAs, which are mini strokes, basically. Um, foreplay <laughs> to the real stroke right. but and then I had the big stroke in the hospital and that was 10 feet away from a nurse so if you ever want to have a stroke have it 10 feet away <laughs> from a nurse the best place to do it, it really is it really yeah. is and I, I can joke about this now because right. I will tell you now it's just a story right I have uh other friends who've had strokes who were not recovering the way I did yeah. uh, so I have an arrhythmic heart that likes to go fuck you fuck you fuck you fuck you as it beats most people goes ah there, there's some blood for you how about your extremities too now mine goes fuck you fuck you fuck you you're, now your hands and feet are cold and you can't you can't get the, the blood you need wow. um and it, and so because of the arrhythmic heart it created clots and one of the clots uh, created what's called a thrombus i know everything about this now i know you're like a doctor and i know <laughs> well I, I had a lot of doctors on it but um it's it's up on my left ventricle Okay. And it was it had calcium, so it's been there yeah. for a while. Wow. Um, the arrhythmic heart wasn't there as of 2013. Okay. Because I had a I had a major physical. I was going to ask too. if like you knew this no. you had these conditions. Didn't know anything before. about yeah. it, and I just figured whiskey would solve everything. So, <laughs> <laughs> and boy, it kind of does, though, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> but it doesn't solve strokes. <laughs> so, um, I was at the Knights game with my wife. Uh -huh. And I wasn't feeling well. I thought it was like a chest cold or something. Mm -hmm. And uh, we were playing L.A., L.A. Kings. As we know, I'm a sports fan now. Yes. <laughs> um, and they were beating us. Well, actually, let me go back to that. So I go back. I, we, we, go to, we had four rows behind Flurry. Oh, right? wow. Okay. So we're sitting there, and I just wasn't – something just hit me. And I was holding my hands like this, just, you know, looking at the ice. And then I just started feeling really weird. And then – it felt like I was holding someone else's hand. So all the numbness hit my arm. Wow. Then it hit my side, and I drooped, and then oh boom, completely paralyzed on the left side. And Eric is like, my wife, um, are you okay? And I go, I couldn't talk. Oh, my God. And she goes, I think you're having a stroke. I go, yeah, sounds reasonable in my head, right. but I can't talk. Yeah. And then she goes, um, okay, okay, you're calm down, calm down. She gets some, some water. And, uh, you know, it takes my beanie off, and it was winter and everything. And so just trying to calm me down, I was just sweating profusely. Of course. And yeah. I couldn't communicate at all except pointing, you know. And so after about 20 minutes, it went away. I'm just sitting there, I'm going, what the hell? And she goes, okay, we got to go. And I go, okay, no, I, f I feel good. I don't, I don't want to leave right now. I, don't f I feel pretty weak. And she goes, okay, but as soon as you, you know, let's go. I go. These are really good seats. <laughs> <laughs> so we stayed for the fucking game. And <laughs> Well, fact. you know what? The seats aren't cheap either. Not, oh, my they God. They were gifted. The trust me. Trust me. I was on basic cable. I can't afford that seats. You know? I think Dog the Bounty Hunter can afford those seats, but not me. But um, then I, I was just feeling kind of normal. Yeah. So we walked out on our own. And this was on the 23rd. 
and that night I just I couldn't sleep. Something was wrong. Right. My, uh, I was just, uh, you know, something was wrong. I felt like I had a chest cold, yeah. actually. <laughs> Turns out it was blood in my lungs, which is Oh, awful. my God. Yeah. So the next day, I actually went and tattooed, and I was just out of it, you know? And right. I'm like, this, something's wrong, something's wrong. This is Christmas Eve. And so Erica's like, you can't. We, we got to go to the, the emergency room. We got to go to the hospital. And, and I'm like, well, we don't have insurance. So uh, let's just wait till after Christmas. I'm sure I'll be, I, I go, I'm sure I won't die till after Christmas, you know, having said that. <laughs> and uh, I, don't, I don't take much serious. I <laughs> <Good tell. laughs> And so she, I, I, I laid down, and all of a sudden I, I was just, I could feel it. Yeah. And I looked at her, I go, we got, we got to go. So we went to just a quick care. And. I get there, and they, they, they can just see, you know, something's wrong. But I'm talking like I do, you know, mile a minute, ADHD, that whole freaking thing, can't focus. <laughs> and they check my heart rate, and it was about 210. Oh, wow. It's supposed to be about, about 80. Right. A high one's about 80. Yeah. This was o- over 200 oh, wow. beats per minute. And I'm just talking like this, and the guy goes, Are you, do you feel okay? I go, yeah, I'm, I'm kind of always this way. I'm, I'm, I'm just wired. I go, 210? I go, is that bad? <laughs> He goes, kind of, you're about to have a heart attack. We need to run you to the emergency oh room. God. And I go, oh. Like, and again, it's not registered because yeah. I felt normal. Right, you felt normal-ish. right. So we, head to the, we drive to the emergency room, and he goes, uh, <laughs> oh, oh, I'm going to call you an ambulance. I go, no, we're just going to drive. Again, no insurance. So you just we worry about that shit. No, I understand. Yeah. And so, um, you know, tattoo artists, there's, there's no health coverage for us. Yeah. You know, uh, We head to the hospital, get in. I have a bed in the Ten minutes. Huh. They, 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 and and yeah. then boom, I didn't leave for two and a half weeks. Oh my god! I spent Christmas there, New Year's <sighs> there, and and uh, and Christmas Eve. And my daughters, we spent Christmas in the hospital, and that's when they found out everything was going on, everything I just told you with yeah. really hard, because I didn't know any of this. Right. And now we knew. They did a TEE where they they found the uh, the thrombus when they they go through your esophagus, and they look around. And they go, Yep, there it is. All right, he's fucked. <laughs> So then they immediately put me on, uh, you know, blood thinners and things to bring my cholesterol and my uh, uh, heart rate down and everything. And so I take seven pills a day, and I probably will for the rest of my life. Yeah. But now the speech is slurred, and I, I, I can't. And then I had um, that at the TIA, I had another one. And I was doing, we were just watching TV, and all of a sudden, <sighs> I, and then 20 minutes later, I went back, and I started convulsing, and then boom, I was in a coma. Oh my god! And they rushed me down, and I I, I heard things. Yeah. Um, but they rushed me down to get a CAT scan to see what the hell's going on with my brain, right. and uh, then I come out of it, and, and so now I'm back in the in the, in the hospital room, and the and we were on the ICU wing for a week. Boy, that wow. cost a lot of money. <laughs> so. I'm sure. Yeah. Um, but there's a happy ending. There's a happy ending. <laughs> and and so um, I wake up, you know, I just kind of I hear voices you know yeah. my, my wife and, and there's a bunch of people in the room and I just I open my eyes and I go fuck <laughs> <laughs> and then everybody starts laughing and Erica goes he's back <laughs> and then I go the hell was that and I, I just because I didn't yeah I didn't uh, no of course, of course and so it was it, it was bad but I did I'm come sure. out of it wow. now I still couldn't talk much and so that that, that was the, the the main thing that hit me and so this clot, it's about the size of a jelly bean on my heart, the calcium was just spinning up, and it could be literally the size of a pinhead, and then boom, it goes up and attacks my brain, oh. and then shuts me down. And it, it decided to shut down either neurological, neuro- neurological, it's the stroke, um, or the, the speech. And so mine was the speech, which a lot of people were happy about, <laughs> that I finally <laughs> shut up. <laughs> but. Every, but, but everyone was worried right. as too. And I was too, but I, I, sure, I wear, yeah. you know, I was just bummed I couldn't flirt with the nurses. I mean, that's me, you know, and there was, there was one nurse anyway. Um, but <laughs> that's what I was, that's what I was, because I, I, I want to entertain. Yeah. And so when a bunch of people came to visit me, I felt that I needed to entertain. And now I'm, I'm hooked up to all these things. Yeah. And the doctor comes in, okay, everybody's going to go. Because I'm like on stage, yeah. So anyway, I had a stroke. <laughs> yeah, you know, hey, where, where are you from? Tip your bartenders. The whole thing. And so then, so that was, that was the fun part, if that makes right. sense. Then I get, I get admitted out, or whatever that means. I leave the hospital. I can't walk. I haven't moved. I haven't moved off a bed 
in, in over two weeks. So my, mu my muscles are starting to atrophy, everything. Yeah, absolutely. And I'm just weak. And I've never been this weak in my entire life. So um, the recovery was the worst. And it was about five months be wow. of recovery that I, until I started feeling normal. Right. Normal was about six months, but feeling better. And, you know, now I'm on, you know, Coumadin and, and just all these different drugs yeah. that you got to take. And I had every side effect there was. And I won't even go into the, some of the side effects because they were disgusting. But I was not myself. And that's what I the most fear. And then, but I also, I also was told I couldn't drink. And that <laughs> was <laughs> devastating because I really enjoy drinking. <laughs> I, and I'm good at it. I don't get hangovers. I've never gotten a DUI. You know, I mean, I'm, I'm really good at it. And it's all I have, or yeah. it's all I had, because the voices, as you can probably tell, they don't stop. And hey. so, you know, my ADHD and all the things that I have, and those are that I have, um, a shot of whiskey, I'm like, oh, you know what? I don't care if my shoelaces are tied the right way or whatever, whatever, yeah. the, 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 like this needs to be here and that needs to be here, and all the things that I have with the OCD. Yeah. Um, it goes away, and so uh, many times I've had arguments with doctors about mm, you want they want you on Adderall. I go, well, can I just drink scotch? <laughs> <laughs> you know. So anyway, right. so having said all of this, uh, about two months ago, my my only goal was to get to punk rock bowling. So D Dirk Furman in the hostile town. I'm like, don't cancel the gig. Yeah. I want to get. So we're talking December to May, huh. May 28th is punk rock bowling. May 21st, I get kind of diagnosed, are you okay? Meaning, am I strong enough to get on stage? Because right. I tried doing some rehearsal and stuff, and I was not. My voice was not strong. My stamina was, to, to run through a 45-minute set of uh, my music. Yeah, I can't even imagine. Yeah. <laughs> you know, because I, you know, I play, like, uh, like Erica said, very aggressive music. Um, I love your music, by the way. <laughs> thank you, thank you. So that was my goal, yeah. was to get uh, to that moment. So on the 21st, I met with my cardiologist and uh, Dr. Narala, thank you for everything, um, and he said that I, I would be okay to play. Uh, that, you know, they, they put me up with all the, the wires, the EKG and all that stuff, yeah. and that I would be okay to play. And then I'm like, um, can I drink? <laughs> <laughs> and he said, I could have a little, you know. And so to me that means, well, for a lesser man, that's a little. That means I can have a little more. <laughs> and so, and that's all I wanted. Because right. I, you know, I, I, I don't mean to be an alcoholic, but I am. And so not being able to have just a drink. And yeah. so now it's, it's just nice. I met my wife for lunch, and I can have a cocktail. Yeah. A, a beer. I have a beer, a, a beer whiskey. And I, 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 we just met, and I had a nice cold beer, and that was it. Okay. So then I'm done until later when I meet some other friends. <laughs> but... I'm, I'm joking, but I just keep everything in moderation, yeah. and uh, and that's okay. And that, to me, just being being here, the way I feel, and and the strength you know, I'm getting, and I can I can start working out again. I can start, you know, because I awesome. really I really lost muscle and and, and I okay. lost so much weight, yeah. you know. And I don't, uh, I, I I like I need a little beer belly. I need that, but <laughs> but uh, I just I feel good. Okay. Did you want to say anything? No, 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 <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> no, I'm just, I'm so happy you're okay. Thank and you. I know everyone really wanted to know everything For that sure. happened. So. Well, I mean, and, th and that's and that's the story. Yeah. And, and everyone was so great. I wasn't, weirdly, I, I'm a private person for a guy that loves talking about himself. But um, I, I wasn't going to really, because I didn't have any information outside of, I'm in the hospital, I had a stroke, and I might not recover. I, and so I, I, stay, I was off social media for months. Yeah. And then I, I was talking to Turbo, the, the drummer in Hustle Talent, and one of my best friends, and he's like, you know, you, you really got to say something. And so I, I wrote that really nice thing, and yeah. everybody responded. And I, I, I spent two days just responding to everyone that yeah. responded. I'm like, oh, 700 people, shit. <laughs> and yeah, thanks for, the, thanks for the love and support. Right. Don't pray for me, ha, 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 all that kind of thing. Um, and... It's just, it's just been incredible, the outpouring. Yeah. And so I want to address how I feel now, and this is the first time I've ever talked about it. Yeah. Um, I just started, I just came back, and all of a sudden I had gigs again, and everyone's like, are you okay? <laughs> I'm like, uh, I just didn't want to. Because you, you, when you have uh, something traumatic like this, you, you tend, or you can tend to be defined by it. Huh. I didn't want to be Dirk Vermin who had a stroke. I yeah. just wanted to be Dirk Vermin again. Right. And so now that I am, I'll talk about it. In the next couple of weeks, I'll, I'll make kind of an announcement about what happened. 
Yeah. Or just tell people to watch Corey Taylor talks. That's right. <laughs> and then you get the whole thing. Yeah. So there you go. Well, I am so happy you're okay. Me too. Yes, and uh, and I, I know everyone. Um, when I saw the post, I everyone was like, "Oh my god, oh yeah. my god!" But um. Here you are, yeah. back and better than ever, kicking butt and taking names. And now you know about your health, so yeah, yeah. you know where to go and how. And like you said, the balance is to help balance and, and, everything. And the toughest thing, weirdly, once I started feeling better, was the financial burden. Yeah. You don't want to get sick in America without insurance. Right. You don't want to get sick in America with insurance. Yeah. So I didn't have insurance. And, and I will say uh, St. Rose is amazing. Oh, they really? covered everything. Really? They covered all my hospital bills. Not the doctor's bills, but my stay, because my, 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 my bed was almost $200,000 for two weeks. Oh, my God. And that's just a fi- And I'm already in trouble with the IRS, so I'm paying them 200000 I can't join, you know. Yeah. They, they covered it. Wow. It's a Catholic hospital, so, you know. Gotcha. Whatever that is. <laughs> 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 but, but they were amazing. And yeah. the nurses at St. Rose. They're, they're the true heroes. You yeah. know, uh, they they were they were amazing. So there you go. That's so cool to hear because I know usually they say UMC because it's the public hospital. Yeah. St. Rose, that's amazing. Yeah. If you ever have a stroke or anything else, <laughs> please go to a Catholic hospital. Um, <laughs> it, it was incredible. That's awesome. I, and you know, and, and I, I I like that I'm able to to praise them and and and, yes. and tell other people and and things like that because they I was tr- not that you're gonna get everyone's gonna get a free bill. Right. And, tr- no, and trust right. me, I have m- a lot more medical things I got to pay. Of course, you know, because yeah. I've got, you know, X amount of doctors that have uh, that took care of me and stuff. And th- but they, everyone's been amazing. Yeah. Considering, you know. That's amazing. Yeah. Well, I, well you're doing great, yeah. and uh, and so you're performing again. Yeah. That uh, is so cool. Why don't yeah. we talk about that too? Well, yeah, I, I have uh, I yeah. have this new project uh, that's well, it's actually been around for a while. The last gig I had before the stroke was uh, my my band, the Dead Dolls. Okay. And the Dead Dolls is just a punk cover band. We're we're having an absolute blast. We just play whatever we want. We just added ACDC and Motorhead to <laughs> our already <laughs> punk rock set, and we're playing a lot. Hostile Talent is a little tougher because all oh, everybody in that band is so busy. Right. Um, but I will get uh, get back to that. We'll we'll probably play just a few times a year. But yeah. but Dead Dolls are seems like we're playing every weekend. So. That's great. Yeah. That's great. And still tattooing. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, I gotta pay those medical bills. <laughs> no. <of course. laughs> That's a lot of butterflies. <laughs> let me tell you. <laughs> so, no, yeah. um, but you are—you're an incredible tattoo artist, oh. and you said it. So I'm gonna bring it up. We're gonna talk a little bit about the show too, and sure. kind of how. I don't care. Yeah. Okay. So I know you've had a lot of problems with it. Well, and I just what had exactly one problem. Happened. <laughs> I only had one problem with yeah. the show. It was fucking bullshit. Yeah. <laughs> That's the only problem I had with it. But um, weirdly, I, not weirdly, but I, I jumped back into writing. And I, 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 there was a speech pathologist at St. Rose and when I was having trouble speaking. Um, and, you know, she had said that, you know, talk, read, read. I don't like reading, but, yeah. you know, but I'm writing a book. So right. I was unable to write till about a month ago. Wow. I just couldn't – because I, I, I need to be witty. I need to be funny. I don't, yeah. It's not just like, on this day, this happened, and then something else happened. <laughs> wow, fascinating. I need yeah. to be, you know, yeah. my writing is very much how I talk. Yeah, exactly. You, you know? need your so style. Yeah. I need, I'm always heading, heading to that punchline. <laughs> so um, I started writing, and this is a book that I, I started probably 10 years ago, and it kept going into other books. It's The Devil and Dirt Firm, yeah. which we, we talked about yes. uh, previously. Um, I will probably be done with initial, uh, the initial writing end of next month. Oh, wow. Yeah, so I'm that far ahead. Wow. And I jumped into this. You know, both barrels. Yeah. So, yeah, and it's it's good. It's funny. What I but what I found out when I started the book, um, at the end of Bad Ink, I was I was pissed. And I'm like, oh fuck, I'm gonna write about this. And then, <laughs> and then they didn't do this, and now they didn't do this, and then I didn't get this, and it felt like, oh, poor guy. Wow, your TV show wasn't perfect. That must suck for you. And I didn't want it to be that way. Oh uh, yeah, I got So you. now it's more. It's just more matter of fact. Yeah. It's, uh, I tell the stories, but I tell them with a little bit of humor. When I, when I met the producer, uh, I met a producer at the end of Bad Ink. Now, you know, now I'm fired by A&E, and I don't <laughs> have this, and I don't have that. And then some sleazy Hollywood types come into my life. Well, I take that very much, I turned it into, uh, it, right in the middle of a book, a script, like a one-act play. Oh, wow. And it just comes out of nowhere. 
And it was, and that was my, well, probably my third deal with the devil. And by deal with the devil, I mean the metaphor, because if someone would have told me, okay, we're going to give you a TV show where you get to show who you are, your band will be on it, your children will be on it, and you're going to cover bad tattoos, which you're really good at, and so promote your shop and your band and all these things, and you'll be famous. I'm like, oh, where do I sign? Well, I did that shit. Okay. Turns out it was horrible, and it was the worst thing I did. So I went, that was another, you know, the, the deal with the devil, the metaphor, right. meaning, you, you know, there's always something at the end of this. When mm -hmm. you sign that contract, and then the devil just kind of smiles at you and walks away, and you're like, what the hell was that? Right. <laughs> <laughs> wait a minute. Hey, wait, wait, wait a minute. You know, and, and the blood's not even dry yet. You know what I mean? Right. And so that's the metaphor for the whole book. Gotcha. And, and, and not that I'm a victim by any means. I go into this, I, I understand what I did. Mm -hmm. You take a chance, right. but I'm allowed to tell my story. But yes, a and, e, a and E may not feel that way. I'm sorry, <laughs> A&E's lawyers might not feel that way, but I'm telling my story. And, and so by putting like that one act play where the, and it's just, you know, a couple pages where, you know, where literally a devil walks in and has me sign in blood. Well, that didn't happen. Right. Or did it? It might have. Because <laughs> it sure <laughs> felt like it. it There's sure so many conspiracy like, theories now. Who it knows? sure it's felt like that's what I did, you know? <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. But, but anyway, so it's, I'm, I'm taking a, a humorous approach and, 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 and just there's a lot going on there. But it's, uh, there's only two chapters about television. One's yeah. about getting on TV. And then one's about the aftermath of what happened <laughs> afterwards, which is actually more fascinating to me. Yeah. You know, because that's like what the, you know, what happens. I mean, getting on TV was like, you know, you get a phone call and all of a sudden you're on TV. Not many people get that. Right. So that's a fascinating story. But the other 12 chapters are about growing up here, about being in a punk band, yeah. uh, about being an, uh, an artist, about my tattoo parlor, about my art gallery that I used yeah. to have. So everything's got a chapter. So it's not, a, it's not an autobiography. It's more... Just, uh, I've said it before, excerpts from a life. Yeah. And so I'm allowed to, because I'm a first-time writer, uh, I can make it anything I want it to be. Yeah. I don't have any rules. That's, that's, that's punk rock. If I would have went to college and had rules, I'm like, <laughs> oh, so is this a run-on sentence? I don't <laughs> fucking care. I'm a punk rocker. It's a run-on sentence. Edit that. Okay. You know, uh, because y I write in a style that's, that's very, uh, I, I, I think and I hope, compelling. It's yeah. compelling to read. And so if, if you like listening to me, wait till you read me. Um, and that's, so that will probably be realistically released in about a year. Okay. Because even once I get it done, then lawyers have to look at it. Editors have right. to look at it. It has to be formatted to, uh, you know, things like Kindle and all that, and then somehow produced. And uh, I don't know who's paying for this, but uh, <laughs> it's probably going to be me. <laughs> <laughs> but it has to come out. Because yeah. this oh, is... Yes. This has been so cathartic to, to be able to work these demons out. I haven't jumped into the bad ink chapter yet because I don't want to go there. Because right. I'm still like, fuck, I don't want to watch those shows. I don't want to tell you. But I am going to go. Uh, that tattoo, uh, Pamela Anderson, fake. Okay, Tony Danza, <laughs> fake. And just I'm, gonna, I'm really going to go through yeah. it and, and, and pull uh, the, the sheets up or whatever, you know, exposing the great and powerful Oz and, um, and just tell people what happened. Yeah. If I'm sued for it, well, then I'm sued for it. It's just going to sell books. A and E would be wise to ignore me. Yeah. But if they don't, even I'll better. Be on, I'll be on Jimmy Kimmel. <laughs> there you go. I mean, after Corey Taylor talks, of right, course. I gotta get. Of the course, you, you'll get the exclusive. <laughs> you'll get the exclusive. But um, you know, anyway. So it's uh, it's been really helpful for me with my speech as well, because as as I write, yeah. I read and I talk. Oh, okay. I, I say it out loud as I'm writing and yeah. stuff. So um, it's been it's been a real battle for, with my voice, but it's. I mean, if you if I didn't tell you, no one would know I have a story. No, I was gonna say you yeah. sound absolutely perfect. Yeah. I would have no idea. No well, idea. it's because I'm on. I'm on too. You know, on like on. <laughs> when I'm on, it's like that. But yeah. when I'm you know when I'm, I'm at home on Netflix, I'm stuttering and not knowing how to you know yeah. do that. But yeah, so that helps. And yeah. I, I did find when I when I started singing too. Again, I was able to sing, and uh, or scream in key. That's my, <laughs> my daughter says no you have a great voice it, 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 the, and like honestly i love your music it's great I, and you can tell it's like from the heart i really love it I oh love thank it. you yeah thank you. no you're great yeah thank you that well that last record i, I couldn't be more proud of oh it was so good it's just, and it's again i love the cover art too i think it's oh, so you. cool everything <laughs> about it it's, it was very well put together yeah yeah the vinyl was, uh, everything it was great you know thank you squid hat records for uh believing in me and, and putting it out you know, yeah so 
great. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah. And then, um, how were your kids reacting when all this happened? I can't uh, even imagine. Well, how. yeah, Jasmine and Tiger were there almost every day. Wow. You know, and and then when I went into the coma, uh, Erica actually contacted uh, Jasmine Tigerly's mother and brought her down and this is this is classic Tiger Lily because uh, Jasmine my oldest is like um, well I, I'm gonna I'm gonna go down there something you know something's wrong yeah. and then uh, Tiger Lily's like well I'm sure if he died mom would tell us <laughs> <laughs> oh to be 16 again <laughs> and she got that from me because I'd be the same way. Like, yeah, yeah, it'll be fine. We don't, we don't have to go down. Yeah. So, but they, they, they've been. They, of course, they've been really supportive and worried and stuff. Yeah. But as soon as I, I start feeling better, I think everyone has a tendency to go, "He's okay." Yeah. Because I wasn't okay, you know, and I can joke about it now and all that stuff. But I wasn't okay. No. Oh. And and it no, was, strokes I mean, aren't a joke. They, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, and then in the middle of stroke, I had a gout attack and I was on crutches, you know. So all Jesus. I needed to go was ten feet to the bathroom. That's it. Just ten feet off yeah. the couch to the bathroom. And I didn't have the strength to do it. Wow. And getting on a crutch and then falling on a toilet, and then how do I get up? It was yeah. it was bad. I wasn't able to walk and stuff. So, you know. No, my grandpa had a stroke, and he was never the same after yeah. it. So. Well, I, I, I'm uh-huh. beyond lucky. I, I, there's another tattoo artist, uh, Stevie, who I just played a benefit for in Bullhead City, and she had a stroke that where it, it was in her brain, you know, like an an, not an aneurysm, but something right. in her brain <laughs> stroked her out, and um, she's going to be lucky if she can ever tattoo again. Mm. Because it and it affected her right side, and I just we were swapping stroke stories yeah. at the benefit and stuff, and she has a really good attitude, and, and hopefully that yeah. will carry her through. But but something like this and uh, any any uh, health issues I've ever had have all been autoimmune. Like I can't catch I can't catch a cold, but I'm like oh arthritis, you got it. <laughs> Skin cancer, you bet. It's, it's just your own cells attacking you, and now my fucking heart's trying to kill me. Like, jeez. You know, and, no, and I think that's supposed to be. Yeah, that's what it, I'm like, what the hell? You know, I, mean, I mean, it couldn't have been the whiskey and cigars. But, <laughs> no. <laughs> you know, uh, yeah. Slowed down on that. <laughs> no. Yeah. No, but I think it's uh, it's great that you do have such a positive outlook, and I'm sure that helped yeah. a lot, too. Well, it, it helps with everything that I yeah. do. There, 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 ain't, there ain't shit I can't make a joke about. Or yeah. or take it, not, not take it lightly, but you can either cry about it or laugh about it. Yeah. And to be honest, it's pretty fucking funny now. You know, I mean, it wasn't funny then. There were, there were, there were a lot of tears that, at, at first. But now it, it, it sort of makes sense the way I was living. You know, not that I'm like some crazy, psycho, no, but... dr- drugged out badass or anything, which don't, they don't live long anyway. But, but I feel like I'm, I'm given a new lease on life. Yeah. And, and I certainly have a different perspective. So uh, when I jumped back into the book and, and wrote, I've had to go through chapters that I wrote a few years ago or a few months ago, well, last year. And I'm like, oh, wow. That's, that's a little bitter. Let me take that down. All right, you, know, you poor guy. That whole what I was talking about. Yeah, you know, yeah. Poor guy. I don't, you know, I don't want people to look at that. I want people to laugh and, and to realize that it's just a story. Yeah. So it's been so instrumental in my recovery on everything, not just physically, but emotionally. Because yeah. when you go through a, a trauma like this, it, it's tough. Because I didn't feel like myself. I wasn't funny. I wasn't witty. I wasn't anything. I was just sitting on the couch. Want, you know, feeling like I was going to die, yeah. and and so that's not me. I don't. I, I, yeah. I can't. I can't be in that space too long. And I was in it too long. Yeah. So one, you know, once I came out of it, it, it's all. It's all. Oh, great, he's back again. This guy, you know, this this the too much guy. But I'd rather be that than, than yes. how I was because people didn't recognize me. I mean, my my soul. They didn't recognize right. it. They talked to me and I'm like, oh well, it's nice seeing you. Why do you think he's going to be okay? <laughs> you know, I'm like, oh, I'll be fine. It's okay. You know, and I just, I wasn't myself. And, yeah. and that's a hard thing to look in the mirror um, and not, not, not see yourself. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like that, that's, no, that's of a, course. You know, yeah. It's like a really bad acid trip. Yeah. You know? Or a really good acid trip. <laughs> <laughs> Don't do drugs. Stay in school. Sorry. <laughs> no, but I, I, I'm so glad. And that was only a few months ago, and it, you were doing amazing. Yeah, yeah it is, it's, it's kind of shocking yeah. how quickly I recovered. Seven months. Yeah, you know, yeah, that's. Yeah, because I mean, and the fact that I was able to come back from it with almost no uh, side effects is incredible. Yeah, so I feel very lucky. There you go, there you yeah. go, and you're like I said, kicking butt, taking names. Yes. So let's talk a little bit more about your bands too. Uh huh. Um. So you said uh, bad dolls. Uh, the dead dolls. The dead dolls. Dead, dead dolls. dolls. Yeah. Dead dolls. <laughs> yeah, dead dolls. We're playing uh, the twenty first at the Island Bar, which is right okay. around the corner from here. Like it's. 
Like, oh. we, we can walk there. Well, let's do it. <laughs> it's like Maryland. Or, I don't, are you old enough to get in there yet? Yeah, I'm 20. Right. I just turned yes. to, actually, I, December 26th, right. I turned Drinks 21. On you. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, and then uh, double down on the 20th. And I think that's the last gigs for then. And then uh, man, we got gigs in August, and I'm sure Hostile Talent will be here pretty quick. Yeah. Uh, Stormtroopers of Dirk, which is something I do a handful of times. We haven't played for a while, okay. and that's a lot of fun. But we'll do something next year, regardless, because yeah. that's just that's just a blast. It, it's um, and then uh, Blood Cox UK, my other band uh, that I toured. With How Japan. many bands do you have? <laughs> Apparently en uh, <laughs> enough. But uh, but yeah, uh, Blood Cox UK, we we only toured Japan, and, wow. and that's with wow. Moss from the Double Down. Uh, Alan Carter, uh, who, who's in a few bands, but he, he owns uh, Squid Hat Records. Uh, mm -hmm. We call him AC, great guy. And then Haas from uh, Franks and Deans. And so I play uh, lead guitar and uh, I, play, I, I sing on about maybe three or four songs. Yeah. And then Moss uh, is guitar and vocals, Haas is bass, and then uh, Alan's on drums. And that's really fun. But we, we toured Japan now three times. Wow. And we're doing our final tour uh, next year, and we're going to record a live album. And then oh, call cool. it quits. Yeah. yeah. So that's that's pretty fun. Japan's amazing. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, I stay busy. A little bit. Just yeah, a little. Like, <laughs> Most people be happy with one band. Yeah. I know. <laughs> Very good. But that's amazing. I think yeah. that's so cool. And so they all do different things. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, because yeah. uh, Dirk from the Hostile Talent is my original. That's where, mm -hmm. I, that's where I write the songs and where I put whatever I need to put into my music. Mm -hmm. um, Dead Dolls is just fun. Yeah. We're going to play other people's songs regardless and have fun with it and they, well this song sounds good and we're going to do uh we're going to do that and so that's that's just a blast and then storm stormtroopers is uh there was this band called uh, storm uh, stormtroopers of death mm -hmm. that came out in like 85 and it was the guys from anthrax and something we just played their one album start to finish wow and it's 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 a blast but it's really not politically correct <laughs> <laughs> anything on it so i don't think you're that politically yeah, correct people, anyway so uh, it's okay that's a, that's a fact. but it's 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 meant to be kind of a tongue-in-cheek yeah, thing we're, no, not, we're not taking this seriously when i scream whatever the lyrics are i don't mean it it's just it's, no, it's fun it's just fun it's a little bit of a you know a history lesson from 1985 and then uh, blood cox is uh, that's all original as well so yeah very cool yeah that's well, Mike, and then so touring Japan. So you're planning on doing that next year, you said? That will be, be like, in February. Oh, February. Oh, wow. Yeah. So already planned. Wow. Yeah, it's all. It, it has to be planned in advance. That's awesome. They got to they got to book the rooms and get the the sound system and then book the tour. You yeah. know, we last year we did I think ten dates. The year before we did twelve. Uh, so this one I'm hoping is maybe just a, a shorter because we're recording the, the live album. Right. So hopefully we won't play that much because I've toured absolutely all over Japan. Um, and so I've been every section of it played for the past few years. And it's incredible. So. And out of all the places you played and traveled and everything, what was your favorite? Do you New have York. like a favorite? New York. I love going. I love going to New York. Yeah. A particular venue or? Um, I I would say there's a small place called uh, why is it uh, Shrunken Headroom. Oh. Somebody something Shrunken Headroom. I can't believe I fucking. I think I heard that. of it before. It's yeah. a pity. Yeah, whatever. Google it. <laughs> but uh, but Frank Woods uh, always sets us up there, so it's uh, the shrunken headroom or something, something like that. I don't, I don't know. You, you caught me off guard there. Hmm. Uh, and then of course the double down. Yeah. You know, double down has been my home. I I was the the first uh, in the first band that played the double down ever. Wow. Twenty seven years ago. Or wow. Something like that. yeah. That's awesome. So I was the, the very first person to play to be a guitar player on you know whatever the, the yeah. first band to ever play so that was that was pretty neat so i've been playing there forever and that that's kind of home away from home yeah. and then there's a double down in new york we played there as well and uh yeah so i would say that japan's nice it's uh, they're smaller mm -hmm. but the the crowds are very appreciative yeah and and they you know, i'm sure it's completely different oh yeah, yeah. it's very very respectful uh, as long as you show respect right. you get respected they're they're an amazing culture and the yeah. nicest people on the planet oh, yeah. they really are that's awesome. Next to Australians. <laughs> they're, just, they're just happy. <laughs> Although they had some crazy things over there. Yes, so. <laughs> indeed. Yeah, King's Cross. <laughs> Google that. 
That's awesome. Yeah. Um, and then, so uh, tattooing, obviously, yeah, yeah. you are an incredible tattoo artist. Do you? Well, you, you can't judge that by my tattoos. No. But, but the ones but I do on other people are. are but I mean, every, everyone knows your work, and yeah. you're really just phenomenal. And you do have some cool tattoos on you as yeah, well. Yeah, I have a lot. <laughs> you uh, do. Too many, according to my Do daughter. you know how many, or do you just kind of. How do you, how do you, how do you count a sleeve? Yeah. Is that one? Is this one or. 15. Probably. You know, I, yeah, no, I Probably a little more than 15, so. even. Uh, my daughter, uh, Tiger is going to apprentice and uh, become a tattoo Oh, you were telling me that yeah. last time. That's so cool. Yeah. So that's going good then? If she gets her ass to the shop once, these, <laughs> once in a while, you know. But she just started working at uh, Grouchy John's uh, Coffee Beautiful. Place. Uh, Jasmine works at this pet resort out in Henderson, and she loves dogs. She's amazing. I just did a really cool uh, dog tattoo on her um, eh, maybe a couple months ago of her dog, uh, Ludo. Really cute uh, Boston Terrier. Oh, cool. So yeah, yeah. So J Jasmine gets tattooed all the time. Yeah, she's like, I'm not an artist, but she's, you know, I wanted her sleeve by the time she graduated, but <laughs> her mother <laughs> had other plans. But yeah. But she's getting there, probably. Yeah, yeah. She's getting, she's getting them pretty, pretty quickly. Tiger Lee hasn't gotten tattooed yet. I'm gonna tattoo a, a little ant on her um, on Saturday. Oh, so oh, it's coming. Yeah, out. she's getting just well. It's a, it's two, it's three little ants on her foot. Um. Their great grandmother, who was this, just the sweet lady, everyone called her Granny Goose. She was from Georgia, and she'd always go, "From the ants to the angels," <laughs> which I just thought was one of the cutest expressions. Yeah. So everyone got ants for her, of the family. Oh, how cool! I did all these ants on you know on, on her mother and aunt and grandmother and everything like that. So Tiger Lily's going to get that. Jasmine got hers a few years ago, yeah. so it's kind of a rite of passage in their family. There you go. That's really yeah, it's cool. pretty neat. That's perfect for a yeah. too. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So. And I, I'm sure I can't even imagine how many you have done. But out of all of them, do you have like a favorite tattoo you've ever done, or not I, really? Yeah, I don't think so. No. Yeah, I, I, it, it's usually what the last thing I did that mm -hmm. I was excited about, you know. But then, if, in retrospect, I mean, there's an amazing back piece that I did on the, on my buddy Gilly with a, just a an octopus kind of fighting a mermaid. It's just beautiful. It's yeah. huge. So, you know, so you know that's impressive because it's so big. I mean, a back piece is. Someone oh, yeah. gives you your back. That's the biggest canvas you have. But I, I just, if I do like a really cool pinup girl, which I do a lot of pinup girls, um, then, you know, I'm like, I always try to just make the, this pinup girl a little bit better than the one before. Mm -hmm. and, you know, so the challenge is always there to, to do better, even though, you know, it seems kind of like, well, all you do is pinup girls. Well, yeah, I mean, what, what, what's cooler than that? <laughs> <laughs> you know, pinup girls and skulls. You don't need anything else anyway, <laughs> you know, so. No, I think that's awesome, and yeah. you have your th and you you do tons of different things. So it's not only yeah, for that. Sure. You're, you're an incredible, incredible artist. But if someone asks me, w I, I want to get a tattoo. What should I get? I go a pinup girl, <laughs> and they go, I don't want, I don't like girls on my arm. A skull. There you go. That's it. <laughs> There's your choices. There you go. <laughs> so yeah. That's funny. And you have tons of them all. <laughs> I got, yeah, I got pinup girls and skulls everywhere. Oh yeah, I also have Frankenstein over there yeah. too. <laughs> yeah, there he is. Spider web. Oh my goodness. Yeah, there's there's a ton of stuff. So. Just a bunch to discover. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, my wife finds new ones every week. <laughs> she goes, I didn't know you had this. I'm like, Turn on the lights once in a while. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Well, I, I'm so happy we had you back. Yeah, me too. And um, so where can people keep up to date with you? And uh, just on Instagram or Facebook. Uh, Instagram, I'm a little better on. I just enjoy it more. Facebook, yeah. I'm like, well, I, okay, let's complain about Trump some more. You know, it's like <laughs> fucking stupid. But uh, Instagram, so just uh, at Dirk Furman. Um. And, or DirkFurman.com. There's a link for everything. Um, and then my, my socks. I don't know if you saw my socks. No. Oh, man. I, I should have brought you some. Oh. Next time when you have okay. me back. Ah, fuck. I, I, I forgot that. But <laughs> no, I have the, uh, okay. the Merge 4 is this amazing company. Uh -huh. uh, if you look on my Instagram or Facebook, there's uh, there's a link to it or darkroom.com. But um, I did a hula girl and a mermaid fighting a sea serpent. Well, loving a sea serpent probably. <laughs> um, PG. <laughs> but... Uh, and then a, a Frank, a Bride of Frankenstein, and a, a cat girl. How cool! And so they're they're really good socks. And merch yeah. uh, merch four dot, dot com, you can find them. And they are they're inc they're really really uh, durable and, and and they last. And they're they're awesome. It's just like having tattoo work on your on your. On that your is sock. awesome. Yeah. So How I've been cool. involved with them for a while, and they're they're an amazing company. So. Wow. Yeah. And then uh, later this year, hopefully. Um, I struck a deal with uh, Tiki Farm to do three uh, tikis uh, of my own. I did oh, I wow. did tikis for Frankie's Tiki Room. Okay. Um, I did uh, Swanky Frankie, which was their I believe ninth anniversary, um, 
and then I did something called the bearded clam, which uh, don't Google that. <laughs> but it was a it was a four armed hula girl with a bearded clam, and so that's that's one of their drinks, one of their signature okay. drinks. Um, so uh, I get the opportunity now to do three three tiki's that are, and I'm going to do um, maybe a mermaid, a, a traditional tiki, and then like a hot rod monster, and they'll all be on a plaque that you can get, and you get the set. And, How cool. Uh, those will be limited edition, and, and then I'm going to do prints for that as well. I don't know when I think I'm going to draw this and design <laughs> it, but at, at some point. I, I, how do you balance I, everything? I, I, oh, my I goodness. Obviously, I don't sleep, <laughs> and uh, ADHD helps. It helps in the, in the short term because right. I, I get obsessed and I get on it, and then as soon as I'm bored, I'm like, oh, cool. I'm going to go over here now, <laughs> you know, and, and you re I really right. do. So I, I, as long as it's, it's all short bursts. Like yeah. I'll, I'll write on my book like crazy. And then I wake up one day and I can't write. I go, okay, well, I'm going to paint now or, or I'm gonna, you know, whatever. And then tattooing just pays the bills at this point. But, um, but yeah, it's a, uh, it's a lot, you know. Yeah. I don't but know why I had a stroke. It. Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> Couldn't be my heart trying to do all these things. Uh, it all makes sense now. <laughs> we made a breakthrough, Corey. No. <laughs> I'm no. killing myself. <laughs> Don't you say that? No, yeah. but no, I, I think it's amazing that you're doing all that, yeah. and 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 to the fullest too. And, and you know, uh, it, that's what's really cool about you. You do all these different things, but you do it well, and you're not like just half-ass at all. Right? You know what I mean? No, so. I only half-ass that TV show. Because <laughs> <laughs> they weren't paying my bills, you know. Anyway, yeah. Whatever. Yeah, it's okay. Yeah. Yeah, we'll get all out on the book, and then yeah. we'll see what happens. I know that I never have to talk about it again. People go. How come you're not on TV? Sorry, that's the accent of everyone who watched the show. <laughs> How come you're not on TV anymore? And I go, read this book. Can you read? Thank you. Right. That was meant for no one in particular. I was just no. Making a joke, but... <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> but yeah, I don't have to talk about it. Again. Just read the book. Yeah. Read the, read the and book. so hopefully the book next year you're thinking. Oh uh, God, I hope so. Because yeah. I'm tired. Of, I'm tired of talking about it or not talking about right. it. Right. And and I think just for me. Oh, I yeah. need, it, it will it'll put a period on the end of so much. Yeah. Because you know, I'm not. It's not about just the TV show. It's it's about you know being a boy out here and yeah. and, and what it was like growing up in, in Las Vegas when it was 160,000 people. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. And you know, and then going to desert shows with, with your punk band, we just take a generator out there and, and play in the middle of the of the desert. You know, uh -huh. just just there was such a, a DIY spirit to everything. Well, everything I've done. Yeah. You know, the only thing that was ever produced for for me was was television that was someone else's deciding well here's what we think you should be say these lines you'll make a million um whereas everything else i've ever done is mine my terms yeah i, I, I do and, and that's uh boy to to have that in to, to have that in my life yeah uh, no nobody ever gets that yeah. i go to work when i want or i don't you know i mean the, the bills will eventually get paid but uh, you know i have set up a, a thing and i can dress like this I don't you think know? there's anything wrong with well, that. Well, I just mean I don't have to put on a suit. Right, right. I don't have to put on a suit and wonder if the boss is going to, you know, dock me because I was five minutes right. late <laughs> for a meeting, you know, or, you know, so, it, you know, right it's now, just, I, I, I was, it could have never been in the corporate world, but, but certainly to, to create a life that, that I built um, from whole cloth by myself, yep. you know, everything that I am was created by me. Yeah. Um, and so that's, I feel Special, very, not a lot yeah, of I feel very lucky, that, yeah. but, but it's also, you know, the balls to do it. Yeah. You know, because no one, not many people have that kind of kind of drive, and, and I'm I'm not I'm not affected at anything. Uh, I mean, I'm not I'm not affected at everything, but I do. I, I seem to only do the things that I'm good at. <laughs> so, that makes sense. Well, you're good uh, at a lot, though. Yeah. So I wouldn't. Well, it's an artist. It, it's yeah. it's the soul of an artist, and that's that, the the wiring is 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 fucked up anyway. Yeah. You know, no, you, you know, I can't look. I look at that, and I look at it in a much different, whatever that is, <laughs> in a much different way than someone logical would be like, what are you seeing? I, what are you seeing? You don't see that? You know, and, yeah. and it's just you know, to have that artistic temperament, it, it's, you know, it's a blessing and a curse because you don't, you look at things differently. And, yeah. you know, in, in school, it was just, when I was a young kid, I was just, you know, ADHD. I don't even had those initials when I was a kid. I just know, put them on Ritalin, <laughs> is what I was told, because I'm bouncing off the walls, flirting with the girls, and doing everything that I'm doing now. Jeez. Like, <laughs> you know, what does that show me the boy and I'll show you the man? And, uh, I haven't changed that much. But uh, anyway. 
I'm sure there was a point there at some point, but whatever. <laughs> no, you uh, made it. Yeah. No, but I, I'm so excited uh, that you're back and so happy that you're doing phenomenal yeah. and incredible. And like I said, you can't even tell. Your speech I mean, is, you can't I, tell by my bank account, but I, <laughs> I'm doing something. But, you know, I think you never could tell by my bank account. And you can't really judge things by that. Yeah. And uh, eventually me and the IRS and all these medical bills will square up at some point. Uh, probably before my next stroke. Good joke. <laughs> Don't even say that. Just Don't even job. say Just that. Job. Don't put yeah. that out well, there. Well, I can't wait to see what's next. <laughs> <laughs> no. no, you are going to stay healthy because yeah. now you know everything. Yeah, weirdly, I'm probably healthier now. Exactly. You know, well, there I, you go. Yeah, I'm, I'm healthier. I have clarity. I have this new perspective. <laughs> Jeez, man. I'm going to start doing yoga and you know, putting oils on my body. <laughs> Why not? Why not? Nah, I ain't going to have it. Don't worry about that. <laughs> No, but you're going to stay healthy, yes. and now you're doing amazing things. You're even more passionate. You're getting yeah. your book done, everything, yeah. so yeah, sure. it's all it's all lining up. I agreed, yes. I, and that's if, if, if this was meant to teach me anything, it did, Yeah. and I listened, and, and uh, I take my health very seriously. Yeah. I really do. I, I make jokes about whiskey, no, of course. but whatever. Uh, they're not that big of jokes, by the way, <laughs> but I eat really well. No salt, no sugar, no fat, no you know, very little carbs yeah. outside of like rice and things like that, and and I just I, I eat for the way you're supposed to eat yeah. for my heart. Yeah. Because if I, you know, I might be able to have like a drink here and there, but if I change the food again to that high sodium diet, because yeah. uh, you don't th even think about it, you go, well, I, I had grilled chicken, and then you realize, oh well, I guess it was fried. It was fried chicken with so much sodium. I mean, you know, yeah. you know, raisin canes. I, I miss you, but <laughs> I can't eat you. You know what I mean? Right. And so no, it's yeah. uh, we. The way I eat is, is like the, the nutritionist that I met with uh, after after everything. This is the way everyone should yeah. technically eat, and so that's uh, <laughs> even, even without working out, which I'm am going to start doing again. But um, I don't know. The, oh yeah, because I don't have time. <laughs> I just remembered why I don't work out. Really? Don't <laughs> you don't <laughs> say. <laughs> but um, you know, it's uh, I don't know. It's yeah. something. It's a point. I'll find. I'll figure it out on the way. Uh, Maryland Parkway. No. <laughs> no, no, you're staying up. That's the point. You're doing it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, well, thank you so much for being back. Of course, on. it's always yes. a pleasure having you listen to me for no. an hour. <laughs> <laughs> no, I love it. I love it. Love it. Yeah. And uh, you're just the best, and and I could listen to you for hours. Oh, I so. appreciate that. Yes, but I'm so happy you're doing okay, and I know everyone is. And thank you so much for being on and explaining everything. Yeah. So everyone, it, I know, it, was really. It felt good, and and to all of you watching, thank you for uh, the support and. Mm -hmm. The, even the prayers and things that, that you, you did on my behalf, it is appreciated. And uh, here we are. I'm back. So. Yes. Yes. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Jerry. Thank you. And uh, thank you guys so much for watching. And remember, never give up. Always believe and you'll achieve. Thank you. God bless.